Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Empowerment with Elizabeth. Today I'm here with my sweet friend, Natalie, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about her year as a state title holder, her prep for Miss America's teen, her CSI, her talent, all the things. So Natalie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey guys, my name is Natalie Nix. If some of you may know, I'm Miss Mississippi's teen this year, and I have been super grateful to have been afforded this opportunity. I live in Madison, Mississippi. I'm currently a senior at Madison Central High School. Um, I love to sing, dance, model, act, pretty much everything in the regard of the arts. That's what I love to do. So yeah. I love it. She does it all. She does it all. <laughs> okay, so talk about how you got into pageantry. <laughs> okay, so here's a funny story. <laughs> Whenever I was, I think, four, uh, my mom enrolled me in some sort of pageant. And I remember, I I don't remember, but they remembered, they have a video of me running from each ex on the stage and refusing to leave the stage. So yeah. <laughs> it's safe to say I did not win that pageant. But I was never the typical pageant girl. I never really saw myself getting into pageants. I watched Miss America a few times growing up, and and that was pretty much it. But at one point, I had a friend who I sang in a trio with, and she was competing for Miss Mississippi, and she asked me to be her princess. And I said, okay, well, I'll do it. Why not? So I ended up doing that. I loved it. And then the next year, which was the only year they had it, they asked people to audition to be a junior performer. And I auditioned for that and did it. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically where whenever Miss Mississippi was televised, people got up and were able to sing and dance um, on live television and record a song. And so it was really fun. And I did that and I loved it. And then after that, my mom told me that, or she told me about Miss Mississippi's teen. And at that point in time, I had a huge fear of talking to people. I really wanted to push myself outside of my comfort zone. And I knew that this was going to be a huge roadblock for me later in life if I couldn't get over my fear. So I did it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really mature thing for you to realize, you know, like I probably should learn how to talk. This is always good. Um, mm -hmm. I wish I would have learned that about myself before, you know, having to do speech class in college and all the things. So you are. Mm -hmm. ahead of oh, yes. <laughs> Um, okay, so talk about your talent. You know, what is it? How did you come to choosing? You know, I know you're a singer. So did you sing your whole life? Did, is that something that you started whenever you started competing? Walk us through that. Yes, I am a vocalist. Funny thing is, um, my mom is the theater teacher at Madison Central High School, where I go to school, and she has been there since 2000. So I learned how to walk in the auditorium. <laughs> kind of funny. My first role was at the age of three when I was a baby kangaroo in Susical the Musical because the puppet did not come in in time. And so one of her students said, well, why don't you just let Natalie be the baby kangaroo? So I was up in a little pouch like this <laughs> and I said, hump me too. And that's pretty much where it all started. I've, I've been singing my entire life. So I love singing. I love it. I love it. Okay. So talk about, we just talked about talent, but talk about your favorite phase of competition and then tell us a little bit about why that phase is your favorite. I will say talent is my favorite just because I I just love singing. I've been so passionate about it from an early age. And honestly, when I first became involved with this organization and how the competition normally runs all the phases and everything, you could put me up on a stage in front of a thousand people and tell me to sing. And I would be like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. And be super excited and not really be nervous about it. Maybe a little bit, but <laughs> I would really be nervous about it. But if you told me to speak in front of five people, that was where I broke out in hives and had all of the issues. And so I've been grateful to overcome that, but talent was my favorite. <laughs> Love it. I feel like that makes sense with, you know, your, your background, your mom being a musical theater teacher, that, that makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. <laughs> okay. So talk about your CSI, you know, I'm sure you've got a cutesy little name for it. So tell us the name, what it is, why you chose it, what you've been working on this year. If you've got any projects going on, all the things. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it's a really long story for my CSI, so I'll try to keep it a little bit shorter. But <laughs> um, my CSI is called Acts of Kindness, or AOK -OK for short. It sounds very basic. It is a little bit, but it's also not at the same time. Um, one of the things that I had always been passionate about from a young age was that I know I'm imperfect, but the one thing that I want to do is love on people and I want to show love to people. I just had no idea what to do with that for my CSI because I didn't really have a story in my life that was an integral part of my life at this time that kind of related to that, that would um, 
transfer over well to the judges and the people who wanted to listen. But at this point in time, actually, my grandfather had been put in the hospital and my grandmother was really struggling with this news. And I noticed that the staff at the hospital were very compassionate towards her and their job was only to help him, but they really went above and beyond their job description to make her feel comfortable and to make her feel loved during this time. And I decided that this was exactly what I wanted to do. And so originally I focused um, A-OK on specific groups of people who deserved recognition for the love that they're showing to others, or maybe just their hard work or the effort that they put in. But over time, I realized that acts of kindness and loving people is inclusive. It's not about singling out specific groups. It's about everyone as a whole. And so I wanted to do something bigger. Um, And at that point in time, my princess, her mom wanted me to come volunteer at Shower Power. And I'd never been there before. Um, If you're, if anybody's not familiar with Shower Power, they're a mobile shower unit and they have um, a home too in the Metro Jackson area that the homeless population can come out every single Friday and get hot meals, um, shower, uh, hygiene items, etc. And um, I remember the first time that I walked into Shower Power, I saw a young man in an army uniform. And I said something about, it was so nice that he was volunteering or whatever. And they said, he's not a volunteer. And that really resonated with me. And I realized that this was my chance to make a difference and use AOK to help Shower Power. And so I basically had a... um, an AOK citywide donation three days and I also had a percentage night at our Chick-fil-A in Madison Mississippi which is one of the busiest in the country and I was able to raise over a thousand dollars and a thousand donations for Shower Power which was really exciting for me to be able to help them and I've also been helping them out uh, through other organizations that I'm involved with throughout this year too and throughout my reign as Miss Mississippi's teen I have been able to implement AOK, AOK oh my gosh from the top to the bottom of the state which is incredible. But one last thing is that whenever I was implementing AOK, there was another aspect of it that eventually came in. And that was the mental health aspect. Mm -hmm. I didn't like to tell people, especially, and I I didn't tell people until after two years of competing um, for Miss Mississippi's teen and being involved with the organization. But I struggled with sexual anxiety, which was me talking about my fear of talking to people, all that. And I was so, I was so, so afraid. But through promoting AOK, I realized that some of the fear I felt started to lessen. And so I started questioning myself, why is this? And it also obviously had to do with other aspects of being involved with the organization as well. But I started researching and it turns out that performing acts of kindness releases the hormones oxytocin and serotonin in the brain, which are the love and confidence hormones. So whenever you are giving back to your community and doing an act of kindness, you're also giving back to yourself in the same way. And you're promoting like a healthier mindset, more positive, confident, all those things. And so it was really cool to be able to find out about this. And then after that, I made it in my mission to also educate the younger generations about this and all generations as well. I love that. I love that. That, That's yeah, that's so cool. And it's so true. I mean, like you do feel better, you know, when you volunteer, Mm -hmm. you do something nice for somebody. So that makes perfect sense. And I love mm-hmm. that you're tying that in too. Um, okay. So talk about, this one's kind of a doozy. I won't lie to you. Talk okay. about why you think the judges selected you to represent the state. Hmm. The thing is, is sometimes people say that it's subjective and sometimes it really can be with the judges because it's just five people or seven or however many it is. Um, I will say that I put in so much hard work throughout, especially the last year as well, to make myself more well-rounded. I always felt that interview was holding me back, and now I'm able to talk to people and communicate effectively, and that was that mental barrier I had set for myself, but I felt like I really broke free of those chains, metaphorically, (laughs) that were holding me back, and so I was able to be a lot more well-rounded, more personable, um, So I think that that's probably why they chose me. I love that. I love that. Okay, so talk about your prep for Miss America's team. Was it what you expected? Was it shocking? Um, You know, walk us walk us through all the details. Not really shocking, just very busy. Right. (laughs) For interview, I have or I've had countless mock interviews that I've been doing. If you follow me on my social media platforms, you could probably see that because I like to post them. 
Um, I also have a mental management coach and coach. I don't know why I just said coach. Um, but every few, every other week, or sometimes it'll be every week, I'll meet with her and we'll discuss my goals, sometimes have mock interviews. That I don't really post as much, but I do do that. Um, for fitness, I, I mean, live a healthy lifestyle and work on my modeling. <laughs> That's basically it, work out, that sort of thing. On stage question kind of goes with interview as well. For talent, I practice with my um, voice teacher. And then evening gown is also walk as well. Besides that, I have been doing the sponsor visits, all of my appearances, which also factor into making me more well-rounded, having those communication skills, connecting with people that goes in and um, working on my social media content too. Oh, and my wardrobe, all those alterations. I will say that is a little shocking. I didn't realize how many alterations I would have and how long those alterations would take. <laughs> that's so valid. That's so valid. That's so funny. You're the first person to bring up alterations, but that's so true. That's a lot of time uh -huh. and money spent on that specific port, port portion. But mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is a big part. So absolutely. Um, okay. So final question. If you could give one piece of advice to a first year title holder, what would it be? Oh, there's so much I could say because I have so many things that I want to say, but if I could choose one, I would say to do something that you're afraid of every single day or do something to push yourself out of your comfort zone every single day. Because if you're not doing something that you're afraid of, or you're not doing something that makes you feel uncomfortable, you're not going to grow at all. And it's okay to fail as long as you grow and improve from that, because it allows you to improve more than you ever would have if you just stayed comfortable. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, growth doesn't happen in your comfort zone. That's so true. Good wisdom. Good wisdom. Yay. Well, thank you so much, Natalie, for coming on and chatting with me. Again, I know that you're crazy busy prepping for Miss America's Teen. So um, I so appreciate you taking out time in your day to come chat with me. Yes. Just know that I'll be rooting you on along with obviously the rest of our state and cheering you on as you compete and represent Mississippi. And I know you're going to make our whole state proud. So um, go kill it next week and have a great rest of your day. And I will see the rest of you guys on our next episode. Bye, y'all.